This is Mike Consul, and welcome to another episode of Novelist Spotlight. This is the place where we interview published fiction writers to gather their insights, writing techniques, and advice, and to get up to speed on their latest piece of work. Although I'm going to do something a little bit different during this episode, I want to talk to you about a writing technique that has to do with physical movement while writing. Now, in keeping with the spirit of the topic, I actually recorded this one in my automobile. There's a lot of road noise for the first five and a half minutes. Uh, I hope it doesn't get too annoying. Uh, after that first five and a half minutes, it quiets down considerably. So I ask you to be patient with the road noise. And I won't do this often, but in this case, I think it's consistent with the subject matter, which has to do with writing on the move. So without further delay, here is my latest episode. Here's one of the ironies of writing. We sit sedentary in a chair to do an activity that we do best when our brain is highly stimulated. If we want to write at an optimal level, we want our brain to be high, highly stimulated. But sitting in a chair is not the way to have full stimulation of the brain. One of the things we know about the human body is that we become mentally stimulated when we are physically stimulated, when we move around. So here's my premise. We need to do a lot more moving when we're writing, become ambulatory, and what we'll end up with is a much better result. I stumbled on this when I was writing my first published novel. I would take a break and I'd take a walk and while I was walking, all these ideas would start coming to me because the, the novel I was working on, Hardwood, which I eventually published, that was still percolating in my brain while I took the walk. All these ideas were coming to me and I was thinking to myself, I have to remember these. I have to remember them so that when I get back home, I can hurry up and type them. And I was a little bit frantic about making sure to remember because I thought this is better stuff than what was happening while I was sitting in my writing chair, so to speak, and producing, producing copy. And this happened several times before I decided the best way to capture this stuff is to buy myself a digital recorder. I went out and this, this is pre cell phone days or smartphone days, I should say when we had all had a recorder on our phone. Although I, I do recommend having a separate recorder from the phone simply because you can be recording on your memos app and somebody calls in and knocks that out. So if you do record on your phone, I would say put in airplane mode and then do the recording so it's uninterrupted. But I go out, I buy a digital recorder good quality. You can, you can record 99 hours of content. Plenty of storage capacity. And a good deal of that first published novel was written on a recorder. I would take a walk or a hike or I would even pace in the house or even just take a ride in the car. Just Although when we drive we're sedentary but there's a lot of visual and auditory stimulation that stimulates the brain. Now that's not for everybody. You know, I'm just the caveat being that you have to make sure, of course, that we're not putting ourselves in any kind of danger by driving while recording, that we're not distracted. So maybe driving and writing isn't going to be your thing if there's a, an issue with concentration that's fine at the least what I would tell people to do is think about when you're writing you're trying to come up with the right word you're trying to reconstruct a sentence you're trying to develop a character whatever it might be and we all reach those impasse points we're in the process of ideation at the least, get out of the chair and pace back and forth and think. Mental stimulation will prompt 
physical stimulation will prompt the mental stimulation you're looking for to clear some of these hurdles over and over again. Now maybe you're that rare person who actually does better sitting in a chair than getting some physical sti some uh, mental stimulation, some physical stimulation that translates into mental stimulation. I doubt that though. Get up, move, record, then transcribe. It's, it's easier than ever to transcribe because a good clean recording can be turned on and voice recognition clicked on in your Word program and out come the words. Now, I will say digital recorders can pick up a lot of surrounding sound and what that does is really makes it impossible, difficult to impossible for the voice recognition on the Word program. Any voice to text program it can make it very difficult kind of mess things up so that's a caveat but so what we can always listen to that recording and speak into the voice to recognition voice to text app in our word program and voila there it is now I'm not saying this type of writing is for everybody some people are very place dependent. They've got a writing room or it's at home or maybe you even have a writing chair. Writing can be something that's very ritualistic and I get that. What I'm saying is I would give this a try because it can be very fruitful. I know from firsthand experience it can be very fruitful. The other thing that you might think about is that if you are at an impasse with your writing and you're using your usual techniques, your usual place, and your usual style of ideation, and it's just not happening. There's some kind of writer's block going on. There's an opportunity to break through that by using the physical to stimulate the mental. Sometimes we need to change a pace. Sometimes we just need to do something different to clear the hurdle, to click our mind into a little different mode of operation. There are novelists out there who, who dictate their novels. And here's the thing. What are we told over and over again? Read your writing out loud. Because when you read your writing out loud, you are more apt to hear where the stumbling blocks are, more apt to hear where the choke points are. We want the copy to flow conversationally most of the time unless we're doing something where, for effect, we're not trying to be conversational. So the act of dictating our writing puts us in that mode, that conversational mode, the spoken word versus the written word. Too often what happens is when we sit down to write, and I've struggled with this during my career in, in, in the newspaper and magazine industry, where my brain goes into a formal mode, where I take on a formality to, with the writing, because it's in some way how we're taught. There's so many people who struggle with writing because they sit down and they think, now I'm supposed to sound erudicious. So I'm going to start to use big words like erudicious. <laughs> and, and, I'm, and my writing is going to turn dense. It's going to become turgid. Is going to become impenetrable. That's why so much business writing is that way. So many inexperienced business people will write, and it's a very dense sort of writing. A lot of big words, a lot of stilted sentence construction. That's exactly what we don't want, obviously, when we're writing our copy. In fact, when I, when I talk to people about writing, I'm editor of a magazine during my day job, and when somebody from the industry, from, a, from the business or investment line of work is writing a piece for the magazine, I tell them, write it like you would say it. In fact, take a recorder and just write the article verbally, have it transcribed, and then go ahead and clean it up. So in effect, we're not writing the copy and then reading it out loud because 
we want to see if it reads well to the ear, if it sounds good to the ear. When we go to read our own copy and we're stumbling and bumbling, we know, hey, um, let me rethink this. Am I stumbling and bumbling because I've got a complicated series of, of, of sentence constructions here. Is that the case? Am I not using words that flow well? If that's the case, now I know to go back and fix that up. But if I'm doing it verbally from the start, if I'm dictating my story, my scene, my chapter, right from the get-go, that takes care of the matter right then and there. One would hope, one would imagine, and one would hope. I think it's always important to be willing to test a different concept, whether it's this one or something else. We never know where the breakthrough is gonna come. For me, this was accidental. And now it's become fundamental to my writing to be able to be able to write on the move is a beautiful thing. For me, that's a beautiful thing to be able to go. I use so much auditory. I do so much verbally these days. For example, when I'm sending an, an email, a business email, I'll often use the voice app, record something rather than doing all that typing because I type all day. I type all day and into the evening and that can get tiresome. But the other thing that a verbal memo will do when I send it to a, a contact, a story source, a business person, is that it gets them familiar with my voice, with who I am. It's more personal. And I think it just creates a another connection channel. They know me in type. They know me in voice. Because sometimes interactions take place with people and we never actually talk to them. We write back and forth, we, we text, we email. But to be able to send some verbal content is a good thing. I've always been a talker, but I've also always been a writer. So many people write because they're introverted. They don't really care to talk. They're shy about talking. Perhaps they lack the confidence to talk with people. So writing is that outlet. It's that channel of expression. Well, for me, I've always loved to talk. I've always loved to write. But it's really helpful to my writing to be able to speak it because I do like, love to, to talk. Maybe you do too. Or maybe you're a person who hates, who really does not like to talk, doesn't like the sound of their own voice, even if it's strictly for yourself, for your own purposes. And if that's the case, maybe this wouldn't work for you. But again, I go back to the idea of using this as a tool for those times when you need to break a log jam, when you need to just do something different to give yourself a different sort of outcome. The other aspect of this is one of the best things you can do for your physical and mental health is to walk. How often have you heard that walking is the best exercise? It, it absolutely is, and it's something that you can do immediately. You just walk out the door and it doesn't require any special equipment, doesn't require any setup time. You're just off and going. Probably just put on a good, comfortable pair of shoes, and there you go. That kind of, and it's long been recognized that physical, doing what's good for your physical health, exercise, is good for your mental health. And let's face it, writing isn't always good for our physical health because we do a lot of sitting. And it's not always good for our mental health. It's not always good for our mental health because we get so frustrated at times with what we're doing and we can become isolated. People who struggle with emotional or mental health are told don't get too tired, don't get too hungry, and don't get too isolated. 
They're all good things to keep in mind. I'm an entirely different person when I get a really good night's sleep. I think we all are. The most important aspect of physical health is good sleep. Because without good sleep, there is not exercise. There's not mental performance. If we don't sleep well, we probably are not going to write well. And sometimes we don't sleep well because we got something on our mind. It has to do with our writing. We've got our writing on our mind. We have our characters on our mind. We're... Now, I will say there is a technique, which I'll probably talk about in a future podcast, but just quickly brush against it here. And that is the technique of you have a problem you're trying to solve. It doesn't have to be a writing problem. It could be any problem. You think about it just before going to sleep. You think about it briefly. And you wake up in the morning and there's a solution. Overnight, your brain works on that while you're sleeping. And not, nothing, metaf- <laughs> nothing magic about it. This isn't abracadabra stuff. This is how the brain works. It will go to work on things. It will operate in the background while we're getting good restorative sleep. So back to that big three, don't get too hungry, don't get too tired, but also don't get too isolated. When we write, we can become isolated. Isolation can lead to depression, anxiety, or just melancholy, just a a melancholy mood. It doesn't have to be full-blown depression. So by getting up and moving and getting out, making sure that we're getting that exercise and to be able For me, I'm a guy who loves to exercise. So to be able to get some exercise, and I don't even think of it as I'm exercising. It's just that if I write, if I walk and I'm writing, it doubles as both exercise and being productive with my writing efforts at the same time. I don't even call that multitasking because it doesn't take any thinking at all to walk. It's absolutely natural to us. And it leaves our full mind share available to go to work on our fiction writing. Give it a try. You have nothing to lose. You have a lot to gain. I would just say, give it more than a one-time try. The other thing is, you don't need to go out and buy a recorder right away. You've got a recorder on your smartphone anyway. But my point being that you don't even have to think about recording. Take the walk. Have your bit of fiction writing on your mind and see what happens. If the ideas start to bloom like a field of begonias, then you're on to something. If the walk does nothing more for you than give you some good exercise, that's okay too. It's, it would be a, that's originally, you know, going back to near the start of this podcast, that's originally how things happened for me was I was just taking a break and going for a walk, getting a little exercise and getting a little space from what I was working on. Well, what I was working on followed me. It took a walk with me, thank God. And some magical things started to happen. Natural magic, the kind of stuff that happens with our physiology, our mental and physical physiology. I would also add, don't put pressure on yourself. Don't feel like you need to go do this, because you want to go do this, or you need to go do this. And and then worry about whether it's going to happen for you or not, because that is just piling on pressure and pressure is not a friend to creativity. Well, I'd add that that's just another aspect to the whole physical movement thing, taking a walk, whether taking a walk or hiking, pacing. That kind of physical activity can foster relaxation. It actually de-stresses us. It takes pressure off of us. And when that pressure is alleviated, that's when we are more apt to do good work, to do good fiction writing. I just say walk and talk. That's what I tell myself. That's what I say to my wife when I'm going out the door. I'm going to walk and talk. She knows what I'm talking about. So I beseech you to walk and talk. Give it a try and let me know how it works for you.
write to me at novelistspotlight at gmail.com. Again, novelistspotlight at gmail.com. Let me know how it goes. If you have some topics that you would like me to opine on in the future, let me know. If there's somebody you would like me to have as a guest on the program, alert me to that. And as always, the best of luck with your writing.